I'm having difficulty seeing you all out there. Must be the smoke. Ah. Must be the smoke. But we're glad you persevered and came nonetheless. So welcome to our service this morning, and welcome to all of the people that are tuning in on uh, uh, YouTube this morning. We pray that our time together will be a blessing to you and to our Lord. Uh, I've been asked before we have our call to worship to highlight one announcement, uh, and I was gabbing away here and didn't even see it, but it was up there. Uh, it has to do with the financial, uh, financial update. And just in case you didn't see it, let me just uh, say this about that. Um, the projected slides. I say projected slides for two reasons. Reason number one, projected. Looking ahead to the next few weeks, we are projecting a concerning trend. Reason number two, slide. We have experienced a slide in our cash flow since January 1st from $17,663.91 to $1,980 as of the end of May. Now, this is not something that's unusual. It happens year by year, but the Board of Stewards and Session uh, covet your prayers and your participation uh, to turn this around uh, and reverse the actual slide, and uh, maybe in a few weeks we will have a projected, we'll project a significant surplus. We'll do that with the Lord's help and your participation. I have a couple of donations somewhere here to start that process, uh, but I'm going to need some help to get that started and to uh, have a, a prayer blessing. So I want Jan Tedford to come up and receive these uh, donations, and we'll have a word of prayer together. Jan, would you come up and join me here, please? Jan? <laughs> Was that a yes? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jan. And Harry, maybe you could join us as well. Who are the She's going to hit you guys. Don't hit us. <laughs> oh, well, now that we have Jan up here, can I ask <laughs> any of the elders or board of stewards to join us up here? I know there are a few away. Uh, a little closer, Jan. Oh. I don't bite. <laughs> There we go. <coughs> well, I have, I have three very simple questions to ask. Can you guys go this way? Move this way. We have to move this way? Sorry. We have to be mindful of television. Sorry. I don't move any further. Uh, first simple question I have is this. How many of you here today do not know Jan Tedford? Hands up. Or do know Jan Tedford? I'm sorry. No. <laughs> okay, uh, we, we uh, want you to get your hands up, keep, keep them up, that's just about everybody. We want you to get your checkbooks out or e transfers if you will and write out a check. Uh, oh, second question. That's the only thing I'm known for is money? No. <laughs> no. Uh, no, no, no. Good question though. <laughs> How many of you here today know that Jan has been our treasurer for over 17 years? Hands up. Hands up. <laughs> Hands up again. Uh, can you distribute the PAR application to those people? And the third very simple question. How many of you know that Jan is retiring from her faithful duty as church secretary our church treasurer as the end of as at the end of June? How many know that? <sighs> Uh, Harry, would you get the offering plate and pass it around? Well, anyway, all kidding aside, Jan, you are not only our treasurer for many years, you are an absolute treasure to all of oh. us. Oh, we pray for our family. Oh, boy. Do this. I wanted to just tell you that there were a number of board people 
that cannot be here, could not be here today, and some session members who could not be here, but every one of them have responded and send their love and their heartfelt appreciation for the work that you have done. Um, we have one response that was written and came in, uh, but I just want to say I know only too well from my experience that you uh, have taken that job to heart, and while many of us carry on day to day to day to day, you wear that close to your sleeve and you bear that burden by yourself. And we want you to know that we know that that's happened and we just praise God and thank God for, for that. And that burden, um, now you share it with Sharon and we're grateful that <laughs> she is very willing to thank you, Sharon. <laughs> so, uh, Nancy's going to read one of the uh, emails that we received and we'll make sure you get that as well. Nancy? Mm -hmm. This is fond memories from Karen and Nick Freiburg. Oh, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow brothers and sisters, we are away for the weekend. Nice to Sorry. Barb Peel told us we should bring a box of Kleenexes because she knew this was going to be. Okay, you're good. <laughs> Yeah, if you're going to, you might as well step to the mic a little bit. Not too, that's good right there. Okay. Fellow brothers and sisters, we are away for the weekend with multiple family events. When we, when we arrived in Halliburton over 30 years ago with three little boys, our sheepdog in tow, and a trailer full of hope wrapping all we owned in this world, Jan Tedford trained me as a new waitress in the gallery at Pinestone. <laughs> That unmistakable laugh, the eyes over the top of her glasses, and our moments of shared work and getting to know one another. Forever thankful for her warm welcome to the new girl, I arrived with dining room experience, and yet it was all so new in these beautiful highlands. We were campers at Halliburton Forest up until the recession of 1989, when things took a turn in our road. We followed this new path thought we should alert or start afresh. Those early breakfast shifts that started in the still dark winter mornings were where I found my place again. With Jan and her sidekick, Cece, Lucy yeah. and Ethel. Yeah. Yeah. Fond memories from Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you Karen and Mick for sending that uh, in to us today so that we could read it. Yeah. And Jan, there are many other people who want to give you a big hug and express their appreciation and we invite everybody to do that after our service concludes uh, this afternoon so uh, we do have a couple of these for you and i'm going to hand them to you to start the slide effort and uh, also want to just mention to you uh, we're going to have a word of prayer um, harry i've asked harry to do that a prayer a blessing and also uh, we want to acknowledge that your birthday is coming up mm -hmm. in a couple of days. So mm -hmm. I want everybody to join in with us as we wish uh, Jan a very happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. She's not going to be on camera, so we'll just, I'll pray for her from here, and then I'll, okay. Okay, okay good. <laughs> Can we join around? Okay. Sorry. I feel so stupid. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, we thank you for Jan, for such a sweet person and a uh, her big heart that you gave her, Lord, and her abilities to, to help us out with the, the treasury here. She is a treasure indeed, Lord. So for, for this, we give you thanks. We pray your hand upon her for health and, uh, and happiness and, Lord, direction as she continues to find her, her, uh, her part to play in serving you uh, here and in our world, Lord Jesus. So we, we put her in your hands, your blessing upon her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thanks, Jan. Oh, oh, oh Jan. I'm sorry. One other little something. That we just needed to.
It's a diplodenia. A diplodenia. And especially when it's a diplodenia. <laughs> if you have any trouble with it, call, call Gwen. <laughs> She's got 57 of them. Okay. What? <laughs> so, what? In front of my house. What I'll do is... So the deer don't get it. I'm yeah. coming, we're coming up to visit you later, and we'll bring it with us. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, you have any words? Well, you can do to keep the deer off it. Okay. That said, said, I invite you to come to worship with me together. There's a sign at the entrance of our church out there that says Servants' Entrance, uh, akin to saying you are entering the house of God. I like to think of this time as our call to worship, a time to refocus from the busyness of daily routines to praising God for his wonderful love and his faithfulness. When Jesus came to visit Mary, Martha, and Lazarus in Bethany many years ago, Martha complained because Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to his teaching rather than helping out preparing and serving refreshments. Jesus wasn't ridiculing Martha's hospitality, to be certain. Nonetheless, he replied, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So before we have our opening prayer, let us refocus. Psalm 66 in part says, Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to the Lord, How awesome are your deeds! All the earth shall worship you. They shall sing praises to your name. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Come and hear, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love for me. Let us pray together the words of our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we thank, thank you, you for, for being, being such, such a loving God. God. We, we thank, thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, for sacrificing your life for us. Thank, thank you for being mindful of us and becoming our Savior, Deliverer, and Liberator. Savior, Deliverer, and Liberator. Thank you for making us right in God's sight. Because of you, we have peace with God. Through our faith in you, we have been brought into a plan of undeserved privilege, and we can confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. As we worship you today, fill our hearts and minds with a deeper sense of your love that we might more perfectly love you and our neighbor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here we Thanks, Paul. Morning, one and all. Welcome. Welcome, folks online. Um, not sure what's... So, uh, I've got, I'm not playing guitar at all today. I've got some kind of weird nerve pinch in my neck or something. And it, my arm is kind of numb. So I, I may do a lot of this today. So I'm trying to free things up, and it helps a bit. <laughs> uh, so that's being said. What else do I need to say? Paul said it all, I think. So, um, And uh, we sure are appreciative of, of, of Jan. So, yeah, got her crying and everything. It's a good, good result. Um, we have a lot of nice comments. Oh, yes. Loud Okay, we got to Matthews, Jan, all the best. That's from Liz and Gary. Lisa Harrison, loud clapping from out here too, Jan. Thank you. Uh, um, and there's 
a lot of birthdays happening. Um, Liz, Roberta and Dan anniversary today. People are telling, hey, happy anniversary, guys. Can, can, you, can you give us a number? <laughs> what, what is the number of that? Whoa, 63 years, Dan and Roberta McComb. Dan, you're supposed to say it feels like three. Oh, Dan says it feels like 103. No, that's, that's, that's wrong. Uh, no, Lisa says happy anniversary. So uh, also, apparently, Paul's birthday is like today or tomorrow or something like that. Yesterday. Yesterday. Close. So... <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to you too. Um, yeah, I think have we sung enough happy birthdays? We got to get moving here. So, uh, yeah, it's Gary, Gary's Gary's birthday too. Gary Matthews. Happy birthday, Gary. I'm just going to say. It. Um, okay, we're going to get the choir up again for the last go before the summer session and for the fall. Come on up, choir. again by fall. So, so uh, in the mentioning of, well, I'm going to put this on, in the mentioning of Jan's retirement, uh, Paul alluded to it, but uh, Sharon Wilson Carr, I don't know if you all know her, she's taking over this job, this little job. So that's, Sharon, maybe you can stand up in case they don't know you. Just stand up here. That's Sharon. <coughs> we give her, we thank her very much for taking it on. It's quite a, quite a responsibility. Let's sing. The Old Rugged Cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest 
worst and best for a world of my sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my Stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away. Where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a Yeah. <clears throat>
<laughs> it would be better. Thanks. Let's put Harry on. That's me. Um, yeah, so I did go to Emerge. And he, didn't, he said, yeah, it'll go away in 8 or 12 weeks. It's, he, he calls it like sciatica of the neck or something. No, no. I'm not satisfied with that, by the way. <laughs> Hoping to have a, an earlier result, but we'll see. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Any others? Okay. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the privilege, the duty, the joy of prayer. Lord, that you call us to be a people of prayer, to uh, unburden ourselves by um, laying our burdens upon you because you care for us. Uh, Lord, so we thank you for that and uh, that you are constantly teaching us to pray and encouraging us. Um, we give you thanks. Lord, hear our prayers today as we, we think about uh, situations in our world, across our nation, in our own lives, and in the lives of those we love and know. Uh, Lord, we pray for your intervention and your healing. We think especially of uh, um, some ho terrible things that have happened recently, the bus crash and the loss of life in Manitoba, uh, the submersible implosion and all those affected by that, Lord. We think of the, the ongoing fires and those at risk, uh, both for health concerns, for uh, loss, of, loss of property and, and of forest and uh, firefighters who are risking themselves. Lord, we put all this in your hands for your help and intervention. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We continue to think about uh, the situation in Ukraine, and we ask for an end to the hostility and the war there, uh, for the saving of lives, Lord, and that you would bring your peace. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We remember... Uh, folks that are in need of your healing hand and touch on their lives. Lord, we think of Kelly Hutchings, John Ritchie, Roger Davey, Sharon Galt, Mildred Hill, Angelo, Dorothy, Al, and Leonard. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love answer. We remember Steve Wiggins Sr., Timothy, Tuya Corpola, Don Gentle, Joan Ellis, Heather Wilson, Graham Reed, Kim Roberts, and Judy Grant. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray for John and Millie Payne, Ernie and Linda Collette, Bonnie Jackson, Lois Rigney, Roy Riddell, Carolyn Argarides, Eleanor, Craig Nickel, Vicki. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray for Jane Johnson, Brian Newstead, Alex Buxy, Jessica, Don, Isabel Jolly, Victoria Ancaster, and Paul. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for Ron Mark Jr., Mark Beach, and his wife Teresa, Harry Morgan, myself, and others, Lord, that we bring to you in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer, and your love answer. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our King, our Lord. Amen. I shall call upon Nancy, I think, to come and <clears throat> lead us in a prayer and, uh, and read the scripture. Just before I do that, can I turn this yeah, back? Turn Is that good? Yeah. Just before I do that, I'm going to sneak in a little personal note about Jan Tedford. When we were at the, about the 11th hour in our preparation to move away from Halliburton, she called one day and said, how are things going with your packing? And Paul said, well, they're going fine, except we want to run out of room for where to put some things. And bless her heart. Jan said, that's no problem. I have a huge garage 
and I'm only using a fraction of it, and you are welcome to bring as much as you need to to my garage. Th almost three years later, we're going back this afternoon to get another load of our things out of Jan's garage. Thank you again, Jan. <laughs> Would you join with me in uh, saying together the prayer of illumination? Gracious, Gracious God, God, give us humble, humble teachable, and, and obedient hearts that, that we, we may receive what you have revealed and, and do, do what you, you have, have commanded, commanded through, through Jesus, Jesus our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll just give you a little bit of context um, leading up to the scripture reading this morning, which is uh, from Romans. Paul's letter to the church in Rome, written during Paul's third visit to the city of Corinth around A.D. 57, has been called by some Bible scholars the Magna Carta of the Christian faith. In the epistle, Paul logically lays down the foundational doctrines of Christianity. Its teaching are as relevant today as they were when first penned by Paul the Apostle. In the chapters leading up to our reading this morning, Paul has been explaining the theological meaning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, including, first, the righteousness of God, then, the sinfulness of us human beings, whether Jewish or Gentile, followed by our justification by faith alone, and then he explains the peace we now have with God, the ever-present joy and peace which flows from being reconciled to God through our faith in Jesus Christ's life and death. And now, in the verses leading up to today's reading, Paul compares and contrasts our justification by faith in Jesus with the ongoing uh, condemnation of sin by God apart from Jesus' death on the cross on our behalf. Romans 6, verses 1 to 11. Dead to sin, alive in Christ. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that gr grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. May this passage of scripture enrich our lives and that to the glory of God. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Nancy. We're singing about the cross again. Um, and this is uh, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross on Which the Prince of Glory Died. Oh, 
Need my essential Bible. <laughs> I'll be right back. There's a lot going on here at the beginning. I guess I forgot to bring this. <laughs> Almost made it. Okay, we're ready. Let's pray. Ah, Lord, we thank you for your word, which is before us. Lord, it uh, doesn't make any sense unless you make it make sense for us. So we pray that you would pour your spirit upon us and help us at this time to, to listen to your voice and to, to understand what you have done for us through Christ, our Lord. And uh, so we put our time and your words in your hands that we may learn from them and, and uh, be enriched. By your, by your truth, in Jesus' name, amen. I uh, call this freed slaves, and we'll get to that. Um, but just so you know, and there's the telephone <laughs> on a Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to talk about sin, which, you know, that's your favorite thing to hear about. It's, it, I'll get back to this in a second, but I, I noticed I've got this graphic probably from Google or someplace that the, the eye is kind of highlighted in a different color there, and uh, which is probably deliberate because, you know, eye seems to have a whole lot of bearing on the, the whole thing about sin, the whole eye-centeredness that we, we tend towards as human beings. Although it's not just individual sin that's, uh, that, that's uh, you know, we're talking about here today. There's a whole... It's corporate as well. You know, there's a lot of talk about systemic problems. And those are, those are corporate sins that got built into the system, got built into our world, built into our society. Systemic racism, for instance, that sort of thing. So, it, but, uh, so before I go on, I realize that when we bring up this unpopular topic, <laughs> and it is, um, people have various reactions. So, um, you know, that's one. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Again, you Christians, you're always talking about sin. <laughs> well, there's a reason for that. Uh, and or this, you know, just like, oh, people just turn off, blank out, shut down. And I have seen this in church. You may be surprised to know. It happens more often than you might think. Um, or this, you know, uh, it could be consternation. Oh, they're going to talk about sin again. That's me. <laughs> well, yeah, it is you. And it's me, and it's all of us. So uh, <laughs> you're not alone in uh, being concerned. People are like, oh, pointing the finger at me. Or this one is perhaps more common than you might think, just fury. <laughs> People are so fed up with it. Um, so, yeah, I was on holidays last week, as you recall. And while we were on holidays, we uh, listened to the CBC while we were driving around. And CBC has some very strange stuff on it sometimes. They have a show called Tapestry, which is all about spirituality. I don't know if you ever listened to Tapestry. And there's a lot of weird spirituality going on. And I don't think this was that show, but it was like it. And they were interviewing a, a, a woman who said that she'd kind of grown up, she'd grown up in this super, Christ, super strict Christian uh, tradition. I think she called. I think she used the word fundamentalist. But, but in her experience, uh, you know, as as a young person, she was basically told that you know she was 
she was just a horrible sinner, and you know she was no good at all, and you know it was just this heavy weight was laid upon her that uh, so she she had this really sen- low sense of self worth. So <laughs> that's a problem. So so basically, what she done is she chucked the whole thing. Well, I call it chucking the baby with the bathwater, because that's it's a bad, unbalanced theological view. Uh, to teach people, you know, that you're just, you're dirt, you're not worth anything. I mean, actually, the scripture is telling us the opposite. It's telling, it's telling us that God so loves us that he will go to amazing lengths to redeem us. And that's because we're worth something to, that's what we're worth to him. But, the, you know, we start with the with creation account, Genesis 1, and uh, uh, and it says, you know, God saw everything that he had made, including us, and behold, it was very good. He was delighted with his creation. And the psalmist says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that we are amazing creatures, we are talented, we are gifted, we are, you know, we, we, have, we have amazing capacities that are just uh, unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> and that's because God created us in his own image and after his own likeness. Um, so all that being said, here's, Mike, you okay? Having a little coughing thing. Um, so... Those reactions are not what I was going for today. Here's what I'm going for. So <laughs> just, you know, uh, curiosity, determined, uh, just insatiable desire to, to understand. So that, that's what I'm looking for today. So before I go too much further, I think we need to, to dis- distinguish between two things. Sin, singular, and sins, plural. Um. You know, sins are the, are the things that we generally think about, but um, th- there's something within us that seems to produce those sins. Sins are kind of the obvious things, the things that we do, uh, mistreat one another, uh, you know, snap at, at each other, uh, steal from each other, shoot and kill each other, um, all those kinds of lovely things that we do, <laughs> living in not considering one another. But there's something behind that. There's something within, according to Scripture, that produces that. So to help us along here, I've got a little imagery. Sin is more like a factory. <laughs> it's ready to produce, and, and it, it can produce goods. And these, <laughs> these are this kind of goods. And I just, uh, you know, from your catechism, you'll remember the seven deadly sins, right? Um, greed, envy, lust, pride, there's some of them, and you, you guys could probably list the, the rest of them. <clears throat> Although... Uh, and to my thinking, it's almost, th- those things are kind of, uh, those four anyway, seem to be a, a little bit towards the factory themselves. I mean, it, we, we, we have greed and envy and lust and pride within us. It's when we act upon those things that we have sins, plural. So, for instance, um, if I envy the beautiful house my neighbor's got or the beautiful car somebody's driving or the beautiful TV that they're, they're watching... <laughs> You know, I might be tempted to, to lie about what I've got and tell people I've got all this wonderful, people that don't know me, right? And just, so that, that would be, be a, a sin that comes out of the sin. <laughs> and so on and so on. I'm not going to go into that a whole lot today. But, you know, we can beat around the bush, but sin is just reality. Look at the news. We see, you know, it in our world, there's, the people are broken, people are twisted. And, and our own experience in our own life is that we've got, We've got some issues inside, some things that are battling against our desire to do good and be, be good people. And uh, it's, it's just, it's there. Uh, and it often comes forth. There's an interesting, <laughs> a little aside here. One of the words Paul uses in the New Testament for uh, kind of almost equivalent with sin in us is, is the word, he, it gets translated the flesh. The Greek word is sarkos. And it, it's the same word that gets used for the body. So some people have said, oh, the body is bad. But the body is not bad. The body is good. God made us a body. Christ, God became a human being, a human bodily human being. Uh, you know, and, and so flesh is good, material is good, but sin is closely tied to our bodies, I've noticed. So for instance, if you have a lot of pain, and I have a degree today, I've noticed that it makes me just a tad more likely to be irritable and snappish. <laughs> now, those would be sins, right? And, uh, it, you know, if you've heard the word hangry, and you may have experienced it, that when you're hungry, that you may get a little bit more touchy, 
And, and, and so, so, the, so sin is in many ways t- often tied to our, our physical appetites. Uh, and, we, you know, we could go on about that. Um, but I know, I know the irritability is sin. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, love is not irritable or resentful. <laughs> and basically, you know, that, that helps me with understanding what sin is. Sin is the thing that blocks love. Like, if we're designed to be creatures that love, as God is, loving God, Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Well, you know, we don't always do that because something gets in the way. (laughs) There's something that's twisted inside us. It's, you know, self-centered, greedy, proud, all that stuff. And the thing that that stuff does is it gets between us and others. So, I mean, pride, pride. Pride is just something that's inside. You can't see it. But... You know, it shows itself by, oh, this person's less than me, and you disdain them or you brush them off or something like that. And that's not love. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's, it, so the, the sin mi- mitigates or militates against, uh, against love. And that's, it's a real thing that we're all struggling with in all our lives. And uh, God has taken it upon himself to, to, uh, to redeem us and to deliver us and to, to, uh, to remake us, really. So, and it's all through this. Everything, you know, about the Christian life goes down to the cross of Christ. And we can't get away from it. We can't say, oh, yeah, we talked about that at Easter. <laughs> this is an Easter service. But, you know, for Christians, Easter is every day. Uh, because the, we're dependent on the cross. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last, the death of Christ. Uh, and, it, you know, in the first instance, Nancy pointed out that... Uh, the Book of Romans is kind of the Magna Carta of the Christian faith. I, I call it Christianity 101. <laughs> it's got the basics there. And it starts out with it's the, something that a lot of us, most of us understand, which is forgiveness, that we need to be forgiven for the sins that we've done before God. And so uh, forgiveness is important and, and sweet and wonderful, but it's not the whole Christian life. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a need to live a holy life. Um, and Jesus deals with that through the cross. And I'm going to come back to this again and again, so this is maybe circular, but I've noticed that it, it, as you read through Romans 6, Paul says the same thing over and over again, so why can't I, right? <laughs> so he says, and this is what he's telling us, we died with Christ. Romans uh, 6, 8, let's see, it's in context. Now, if, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. And so, so he, he, and he says it in several ways here, so I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute. <laughs> so we died with Christ. So uh, what we're concerned with here is not only our forgiveness, but, um, but how, we, how, we, how we live, uh, how we deal with that thing inside, that factory called sin inside, so it is not controlling our lives. And that's what I'm talking about today. So the cross is what, it, what does that. That's through the cross we have victory. Uh, in Christ, and uh, so 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 that's there. Then uh, after Christ died, he was buried in a tomb. There's a whole story in the in the Gospels about uh, uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus getting the body from Pilate and wrapping the body up and putting it in his tomb, and then rolling this huge stone across, uh, which the women, when they came on Sunday morning, were quite surprised to see it was rolled away because it's very heavy. It says. Uh, but this says, we were therefore buried, Paul says in Romans 6, inspired by the Holy Spirit, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. Now, so he gets back to this baptism thing. And I, I did refer to this a few weeks ago when we had our baptisms here. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. He says, you guys, you weren't just killed, you, weren't, you didn't just die with Christ, you were buried with him. <laughs> and baptism represents that. We'll, we'll come back to that into death, and I love this picture, I, I use it quite a bit, <laughs> you may have noticed, <laughs> basically it's a picture, a, a depiction of the, of the resurrection from the inside of the tomb, the empty tomb, the, the empty grave clothes, and the bright light, because he's, he's left, uh, he's conquered death. Can, can you read that? Uh, okay, as Christ was raised from the dead, thanks. Uh, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. As Christ was raised from the, from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. 
So, so he continues to present to us that we not only died with him, we were buried with him, and we were raised with him. And, and the effect of that is that we are enabled to live a new life. Um, actually, probably leave it off, Laurie. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's better. Thanks. So, where's my next one? Yeah, okay, so, uh, and then this is in verse, I can't even read it on my paper here, <laughs> but I can read it up here. 6, 5b, if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. So there's, it, it's interesting that Paul, Paul actually has the past, the present, and the future going on here. He says when Jesus was, was killed and resurrected, we were with him, past, that happened somehow. Uh, and it, it, but now the power of his resurrection enables us to live a new life. So that's the present. The, the reason you're able to live the life in Christ, the, you know, live the life of love, the, the life of service, the life of joy, the life of peace, is, is because of the resurrected life of Christ within you. But there's something further. I wish it could, I could see it better in the other churches. <laughs> We will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. So that's a future thing. And it's, it, it's it also spoken of several other times in the New Testament, that we will also be united with him in his resurrection. So Christ was raised from the dead, and we will be too, is the, is the oft-spoken teaching throughout the New Testament, <laughs> um, that we will, uh, we will receive new bodies. I'm very looking forward to that right now because... <laughs> The new bodies have no pain or suffering or sickness or death. Uh, in fact, it says here, we know that, um, where is it? If we die, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. Interesting. Of course, makes sense. So he, never, he will never die again, nor will we at that point. There, uh, we die the once. So that's, this is the future, though, when, when Christ, uh, Christ resurrects us as well. So we're united with him. So back to this. Now this is, this is a baptism. We did one of these a few weeks ago. And it's, it's a bit of a... So Paul is, is referring and alluding to baptism all through this passage. Um, and, you know, it's a very controversial topic in Christian circles because there are certain churches like United Churches and Presbyterian and Lutheran and Anglican and Catholic and I don't know, a few others, the mainline churches that, that will baptize babies and believe in that. And so the teaching, the thinking in that, in, in this context is that, I mean, the, the parents have faith in Christ and somehow that covers a child until such time as they can think for themselves and speak for themselves and understand for themselves and believe for themselves in Christ. And so then they would confirm the belief of their parents, right? And we call that confirmation, also pronounced confirmation. But that's what it's all about. It's when they, you know, make it their own. <laughs> and without, without that, you know, the baptism doesn't really make a lot of sense. So, so that's one tradition. <laughs> but it's always with the sign of water, which represents, you know, basically represents life and death. Um, now, this is, this is the other tradition, the immersion, uh, believer's baptism. That's why it's called the Baptist Church, for instance. So there's a lot of, you know, Pentecostals and Baptists and, and other evangelical congregations and, and uh, denominations that really don't believe in the, in the baptizing the babies. They believe in baptizing you once you do understand uh, what, what you believe uh, and have, you know, can actually confess and speak for yourself the, uh, of your faith in Christ. So, again, full disclosure, my background, my parents were Baptists. <laughs> and uh, so, but I grew up in Minden where there was no Baptist church, so we went to the United Church. So, so we were kind of uh, a mixed bag of, and probably many of you are, you know, a lot of us have, have been part of various churches through our lives. But my parents didn't believe in infant baptism. So everybody else in the church, all the other kids, <laughs> were baptized as infants, but we weren't. So when I was 18 or 19, and I kind of came to a, a fresh trust and faith and understanding of Christ and his love for me and that he died for me, I got baptized by the guy so I'm from Minden, but I, I, I was a close friend with the, the minister at the time here whose name was Don Nicholson, and he baptized me up in Halliburton Lake, <laughs> uh, along with Rev Bev, Bev Hicks, and uh, a, couple, a couple, of other, uh, couple of other folks. There was four of us. And then we went water skiing. So, yeah. 
So, only in Halliburton. Only in Halliburton. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so, so that was the tradition. So, but it still it represents the same thing. Be, uh, death, uh, going under the water, burial with Christ. Because that, this is, it, it is one of the main symbols of being a Christian because it tells us that we're identified with Jesus and what he went through. That's the key. Uh, it, you know, we died with him, we were buried with him, and we were raised with him. When we came out of the water, we were raised up with him. And that's the power. Oh, still goes to church, too. You know, he came out of the water. <laughs> yes. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, so what this chapter about is, is about the, the problem, not just, you know, that, that we need to be forgiven. <clears throat> that, that was kind of uh, the, the previous chapters. That there's something twisted inside, and how do we deal with it? And uh, Paul is telling us here, it's not, it's not this way. You know, it's not by pulling up your bootstraps and, you know, rolling up your sleeves and being more determined than ever to be a good person. And uh, it, it isn't by our works. If it were, we had something to brag about. See, we're such good people. Look at, look at all the good things we do. Paul says, God forbid that I should both save in the cross of Christ my Lord. And he's talking theologically but he's all, and practically and personally here. Um, you know, when, when we brag about our own doings, then we, you know, our own ability to be good people, if that be the case, which it isn't, then we don't need Christ. Christ died not just to forgive us, but to, to transform us and change us so that we... Uh, so uh, he uses this imagery in the passage, you notice, that you know, we were slaves to sin. Sl- sin is like a slave master, and you can't yourself get out from under that slave master. In ancient, in a lot of the ancient world and the ancient ruins that you see, like the pyramids, were built by slaves. Back in the day, that's just how things how things work. So this is this is to review here. For we know that our old self was crucified with him. This is the same passage. So he didn't. This is kind of puts a, an extra oomph on. No, you know, we died with him. Yeah, we were actually crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. It's the the, the imagery of slavery here. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. And to me, that's the punchline. See, this is where the victory lies, not in in how powerful you are, but in in your death with Christ. I don't know if you ever go to the cemetery and just walk around, it's nice and quiet. And you know why? There's nobody up there sinning. Because those who have died are freed from sin. And uh, it, that's the power of the Christian life. The power of the death of Christ is that we died to sin. For, in fact, you know, it says, in the same way, count yourselves... Oh, I'll, 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 I've got it here. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. That's the imperative. You know, so if we're to obey Scripture and obey the Word of God... It, it, this is defining who you are. I mean, the world is defining us in one way, but Scripture is defining us in another way. And it's saying that you, as, as uh, someone who belongs to Christ and have put your faith in him, count yourself, <laughs> consider yourself, reckon yourself. You know, think of yourself this way, as dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Now, I can't... You know, this works even if you don't understand this chapter. If you've put faith in Christ, your power to live a holy life is because you died with Christ and you were raised with him. And it, it, but it will help you if you understand that that is the case, that you are dead indeed to sin. It has no power over you anymore because of the cross of Christ. The power of his love breaks every chain. I mean, there are so many chains that bind us. Sin is a chain. Addictions. You know, uh, obsessions, all these things that, that tend to rule us, Christ came to break us from that. Not just to forgive us, but to free us. So it's, it's again, to go back to this guy, it, it's not by our own doing, by our own power and might and determination, but by the grace of God through Christ. Complete. There's, there's, uh, we sang, uh, what was that song? Um, I, my mind went blank. What was the song we, we sang at the beginning? In the, the old rugged cross. Thank you. <laughs> and one of the lines is to, it just slips it in there to pardon and sanctify me. 
It talks about the cross, to pardon and sanctify me. So, so pardoning is the you know, forgiveness for sins. Sanctification is the fancy theological word for becoming more and more holy, more and more Christ-like, more and more loving. Uh, so that sin is less and less produced from our lives. And we are, we are like Christ. So, so instead of like that, it ought to be like more like this, a relief. <laughs> because it's by his grace, and not by your own mighty power and determination. Hope that helps. Uh, may God bless to us uh, this truth that sets us free. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all you've done for us. Not just that we might be forgiven, but that we might be delivered from uh, a slave master, uh, sin itself. Lord, we thank you that this happened through your, your obedience and your love and through the cross. Lord, may it soak deeply into our souls that we are dead indeed to sin and alive to God in you, Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray it in, in his name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen. Oh, now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day.